Hello everyone, it's me, Anna. Um, this is my first time doing this with multiple platforms open at the same time, trying to do video for Instagram um, and video for Facebook Live at the same time. And I also have the computer up and I'm trying to see if I can actually uh, see the Facebook Live as it's being recorded. And there it looks like we are. Um, so I'm, trying to I'm gonna mute my voice on the computer and I'm going to enlarge this. And oh, let's see, there, let's go big right like there. Um, so and I'm trying. now we're quiet. So I, I'm live. Um, this is at felt it. Hello, Instagram. Um, this is the best view I can get for you. Uh, Facebook, you've got just my hands here. Um, but I wanted to come to you today because I am very excited about getting started in this process of teaching you felting techniques. And today we're going to turn several rovings into a felted cord. And you'll see what I mean after we get done. Now this roving is um, what's called a hand painted or dyed roving. And it is, Instagram went quiet on me. It is, <clears throat> okay, Instagram's not gonna work. We'll do that later. Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, so we're just going with the uh, Facebook Live in my hands here. Um, this uh, roving, a roving is um, fiber that's been washed and cleaned of any debris, because believe it or not, um, sheep and llamas and alpacas, oh my, um, have a tendency to get dirt and burrs and other pieces of VM, veggie matter in their fleece and as it's being processed most of that is processed out of it however you will occasionally find a piece of veggie matter because believe it or not even though this seems incredibly light and fluffy you would be amazed at what might be able to hide in there but what we're going to do i've just taken a part of a roving and the original roving was about four times this thick okay and i just pulled it off and created a couple of smaller cordings. There's a little bit of a twist in it, and that's okay. We try to get the twist out as we're able to. And I'm just able, because the fibers have all been combed or carded to go the same direction, I'm able to split that into two pieces rather easily, okay? So we're gonna use one piece at a time. Nah, we're gonna put the other one in to soak because we can work back and forth. So let's see if I need to go just a little bit higher here to be able to get that view. What can I set you on? Let's see what I can set you on. What have I, oh, I know what I can set you on. That's not wide enough, but this definitely is. So let's turn this upside down and let's see if we can't get a better view of inside the hole. Hey, lives mean that you never know what fun stuff is gonna happen, right? Like tilting completely over because you're using a new mount that you have absolutely no idea how to get it to connect the way you want it to. Okay, so we'll see if that stays. Hopefully it will. Um, but I've just got an old wash pan. Um, I gotta thank uh, Carrie Walker Weeby um, for this because I got this at her barn sale, I believe, a couple of years ago. And in my coffee creamer empty bottles, I save them for my church because we use them for um, maple syrup when we do our pancake breakfast. But I have hot soapy water in here and I'm just gonna pour some water into the tub. We don't need a whole lot. We just need enough that we can start wetting down the fibers and just getting them nice and moistened with that hot soapy water. Now this is not so hot that I can't touch it. You can see that I'm working this rather easily with my hands. I'm gonna add just a little bit more of the hot soapy and then I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of plain hot water. 
just because we don't always need a whole lot of soap. Now, when it comes to cords, I'm gonna take off my ring here. We wanna make sure that as we're working this fiber, we're working it along this length, okay? And I'm just doing a light, gentle squeeze to make sure that all that hot, soapy water gets throughout. Hi, E, how are you? Um, gets out and all that soapy water gets distributed all throughout the cording. And if you've got comments, go ahead and just please, you know, say something. I've got, that's why I've got the computer up so that I can read your comments and answer your questions while we're doing this. But I'm just going back and forth along the length of this roving just to start felting the wool together. I don't wanna use a really heavy hand. I don't wanna use a really aggressive um, squeeze and pinch. I just want to make sure that I'm starting to get those fibers to connect together. Now, for those of you that don't know what felting is, felting is literally the process through agitation of one sort or another of causing wool or other animal fibers to come closer and closer and closer together until they lock into a new piece of fiber called felt. Now, craft felt, as many of you may know, is made of plastic and man-made fibers. Natural wool felt is generally made from sheep of one breed or another. You can also make um, felt with um, alpaca. Oh my gosh, such a lovely feel to alpaca. Uh, same with llama, although in my experience, uh, llama is a lot harder to get the burrs out of than the alpaca is because they like to get into the rough stuff to scratch. Now I wanna be really careful because I've got this roving worked over on top of itself and if I pull too hard, I could pull those fibers loose and make this two different cords, which is not what the goal is today. And again, you see, I'm just working on one and while I'm working on the other one, I'm letting the first one rest a little bit. And it's just a gentle process of continuing to encourage those fibers to come together. Now the goal is to have those fibers come together in a cord. And that cord, hmm, I don't have one hanging around, shame on me. I should have had a finished product here with me. Um, <clears throat> that cord is going to be still fairly long. These are all pieces that are about a yard long. I just sort of roughly measure them when I'm getting ready to pull fiber to do cords. Hi Sally, how are you? And I'm just gently coming, you know, having these come together. Now, because all the wool is um, going in the same direction, it's all going this direction, it's been carded to do that. So I know that most of the shrinkage that occurs is going to be in the direction that I felt. So notice what my hands are doing. My hands are just gently squeezing around the diameter because that's how I want the fibers to felt. Now, animal fibers like wool and alpaca and llama, even yak, uh, cashmere, goats, um, angora bunnies, they all have a type of scale to the fiber. And when we're wet felting, the reason I'm using soapy water and the reason I'm using hot soapy water is because I wanna change the pH of that fiber so that I can encourage those microscopic scales along the surface to just sort of pop open so that it makes it easier for them to interconnect and interconnect and form felt. So I am wanting to leave most of this length on here that I possibly can and to get this cord to start coming together toward the center. I don't mind if it's a very thin cord. We're gonna wrap this several times around our wrists and we're going to create a little, you know, stacked bangle bracelet kind of look with this cording. Now you notice I am on to the first one again and I'm just letting the fiber rest in between agitations and then I'm agitating again. And it's just a simple continuous process until I see and feel that that felt has come together. 
Now, the reason I say see, the reason I say feel, those are the two things that you're gonna look for as you're felting. I can see, for instance, on this fiber that it's still looking really fluffy. When the cord is done, it's not gonna look fluffy anymore. It's gonna be more solid looking. I'm also gonna be able to feel that there's not any squish going on. If there's squish going on, I still have felting to do, okay? So this is the first part of this wet felted cord process. And we're just going to continue going until we get it done. So any questions that you have about felting, post them, I'll see them here and I can answer them as we're going along. And we will just keep at this. If I'm quiet, you'll still see my hands working because I've got about 12 or 13 of these to work up and get off to a friend of mine who has ordered some felted cords um, that she can put in some giveaway baskets. And I just wanna make sure that I get these done up for her this afternoon so that they have a chance to dry and get nice and solid. And then I can wrap them up and um, gently tie them off. The nice thing about doing these felted cord wrap bracelets is that you can tie them and untie them as many times as you want. If you find that the cord is not exactly felted the way you want it to, or if you decide that you'd like the uh, corded bracelet to just stay the way you have it, you can always get it wet in hot soapy water again and agitate it a little more to help it hold its shape. The wonderful thing about working with fiber is that it has a memory and you will find, especially with felting, that if you have um, wet felted, in particular, a hat or a wrap or um, a, a ruffle detail or of some sort, if you work that and get that to felt in one direction and you change your mind, you know, days, weeks, months, years later, you can always get that project wet in hot soapy water again and you can reform it into a new shape. So that's the wonderful, malleable um, fun of working with felt. Okay, let's see. E says, what if you don't have a single piece of roving in multiple colors? Can you make your own by joining shorter pieces of different colors? Would you needle felt the join first and then do the wet part? You know, E, that's a really good um, idea. You can um, take different colors. And what I would do is either wet felt the joints together first. Let me see if I've got a roving here that I can use. I'm just grabbing another roving here just to use as an example. And let's say these are the two pieces we wanna join. I would tease open the ends on both sides. I hope you can see that. And then I would overlap them. And that would be the first part that I would start working the fiber. And I would work on that going back and forth just right here until that join was made and then you could continue working it. You could also take and do a gentle basting needle felt there so that it's about the right feel um, uh, amount wise as the rest of the cording and you could go that way. So yeah, you could absolutely do that. I forgot if I was going right or left so I'm just gonna continue going this direction. It just seems like the way to go. Wet felting is one of those things that is so much fun for me because it incorporates all of my senses. Not only do I feel the fiber um, getting more and more um, felted as we go along, but I also hear the water and hear the squish and the splash of, of the soapy water as I'm working the fibers in the wet felting solution. I also smell. Um, I like using um, any sort of liquid um, soap. Right now I'm using a Castile soap with a little bit of peppermint essential oil um, in it. And I just absolutely love the smell of peppermint. It's one of my favorite go-tos. Um, it's also great for helping migraines go away, which is why it's one of my favorites. And it's lovely to help you cool off when the summer lasts until end of October, like it has around here. So you can see we're getting a little tail here and I'm just gonna take this tail 
We're just gonna sort of twist it there, and I'm gonna gently, just gently, gently, gently roll that. Let me get my hands down here where you can see them. Just gonna gently roll that so that that tail will start coming back. Gonna get it wet and just squeeze again. Because while having a nice little tapered end at one side of it is great. Um, oh yeah, you smell the sheep too. You definitely smell the sheep. Hi, Gale Nation, how are you? Um, we have, you know, it's all your senses. And if you splash a little bit too much, which I will do from time to time, um, you will uh, get a little taste of either the soap or the sheep in your mouth. So again, I'm just gently rolling here just to get that end nice and tidy. Tapered is good, but we wanna make sure that we've got a nice taper and not a strangly kind of one. I'm gonna go back over to this one and check our ends here. We're just getting started on these felted cords. Um, Gail is the person that these cords are going to, and Gail, you're just gonna see firsthand what it's like to put these cords together. And that way, you can maybe encourage the ladies who are coming for your retreat next week to come for our retreat in January or February. And we can make some felted cordings at the, at the retreat. I'd love it. But this is such, it's an easy thing to do. Okay, see here we've got some stragglies again. I'm just gonna fold it over, give it a little twist, and then just rub gently between my palms. Okay, just gonna rub gently just to get it to sort of come together there so that it's all together. Now, I'm gonna adjust my camera real quick. Dry my hands first. Electronics and wet hands don't go together very well. I'm gonna adjust this so it's a little higher so you can see my hands working here. Oh yeah, that's gonna work out better. Okay, so back to the first one again, okay? And remember how we did the end? Well, now we're just gonna gently start working this rolling motion back and forth all along the length of the cording. And I'm just using a very, very, very soft pressure. This is really hardly anything at all. And it's just, again, we're wanting to encourage the fibers to come together in the center to form the, co the cord. And so we're just gently pressing. If you press too hard at the beginning, you can get um, little creases in the roving along the length. And so the gentler you can work into it, the better and more rounded your cording's gonna be. And we're gonna do this several times until we've got these cords ready to go to the next stage. The next stage is an awful lot of fun. Um, while felting is enormously um, gratifying, I mean, it's lovely to see something come together that's tangible out of these bits and wisps of wool. Um, it, is, it is not necessarily a, an instant gratification process. This is a very slow, methodical process doesn't mean that you have to pay attention to it, you know, firmly. Although if you're needle felting, I would definitely want you to pay attention a little bit more than when you're wet felting, um, just because needles are sharp and they hurt when they stab you. Um, but you can certainly, you know, be doing something like this and do like I'm doing. I'm talking to a friend, having a conversation, creating together. You can do this and be watching a movie or binging your favorite Netflix show. Um, you can do this and holler at your kids down the way to keep it quiet or to grab you something to drink because mama's busy doing the hard work of felting. <laughs> so we're just continuing along, along, the, along the length. And I just want to show you, can you see the difference between this side that's been felt, started to felt and this side that's really just sort of at the beginning of that process, it happens really quickly, it almost seems like. Um, and it's just a matter of very, very slowly joining those fibers together and encouraging them to felt in the direction that you want them to felt. Now, felting is, is quite interesting because a lot of the process, unlike the cords here, but a lot of a wet felting process takes place when you are rolling up 
your fibers uh, in be sandwiched between layers of plastic and bubble wrap and around a pool noodle, sort of like a jelly roll. And you roll and roll and roll. And when I say roll, I mean like several hundred times, even thousands of times, depending on what in particular you're working on. And all of that felting action happens because of the agitation when you're rolling it and because of the heat that builds up from the friction as you're rolling it. And when you open up that package to check on it periodically throughout the process, you see a surprise every single time in how the fibers have come together. It's, it's like Christmas morning every time I do a scarf or a wrap because I know that the fibers are going to felt in the direction that I encourage them to felt, but they're also going to do a little bit of their own thing while they're under wraps and I get to open the package and see a surprise. Hi April, how are you today? We are just felting some cords. This is for an order that I have from my friend Gail for some felted cord bracelets that she can include in her swag bags when she has her creative retreat next week. And it gives me a chance to actually work at my felting desk in my studio. Can you say, oh, I am so stinking excited. Um, I'm also excited because a week from Friday, I will be hosting an open studio here at my home. I put it out on a Facebook event and I hope that if you're in town, you'll be able to come by sometime between four and eight on November 1st, first Friday and stop in and see my studio that's actually ready to be a studio instead of a, a warehouse for right now. This is where all of the felting videos are gonna happen. This is where all of the kits will be packaged and ready to ship out. This is where the video tutorials will be filmed and um, presented to you. This is where I can host private classes if you want to um, gather a group of friends together and have your own private little girls night at my house. I'll be sure to um, make sure we have something to nosh on and you know the bar is just right around the corner um, in the dining room. So I would, I would love for you to direct message me if you would like to have a girls night or a girls afternoon sometime. Uh, working from home means that my schedule is up to me. Hi, Marty. How are you, honey? I'm so glad that you're all here this morning watching me felt these cords away. Um, and I have to tell you, it, it has been a very long time getting my mojo back. And yesterday, um, my son, my youngest, um, had asked if I could make some very simple dice bags for his D&D &D group. Now, those of you who knew Randy or know of Randy through my telling of, of what he loved throughout his life, know that he was a big D&D &D nerd. And I took the boys out to dinner yesterday. Um, we've been getting together to do dinner as a family once a week. Usually it's on a Tuesday, uh, but yesterday was a special day. It's the anniversary of the day we lost Randy three years ago. And um, we decided we were gonna head out to one of his favorite restaurants and eat some of his favorite food. And while we were there, I'm sitting at one end of this table for seven of us. And I'm on the end that's got, I've got a grandchild on either side of me and I've got another grandchild across the table from me and the three boys are at the other end of the table on both sides and they're talking games. And I gotta tell you, Randy, I know he was smiling um, when he was listening to his boys talking about their favorite games. And Ezra joined in with the big boys. Um, at 10, he's, he's getting close to that age. But anyway, I digress. Um, Ian had asked me, because he's running his own game now, he had asked me if I would make uh, dice bags for his gamers, um, for his group. And I said, okay, so they're not gonna be the fancy geeky Lindsay dice bags that you have, because nobody does dice bags like Lindsay does, and, or did, because I don't think she's made them for quite a while now. 
but I'll do I'll do a simple cinch drawstring bag and I sat down at my desk yesterday for the first time in over three years because it's the first time since we moved in August of 2016 that I've been able to work at my desk and I sat down at my desk I'm gonna dry my hands and show you what I did and I stitched up four lovely let me move this out of the way and let's put this down white well kind of white I stitched up four lovely dice bags for Ian and his group they're just a simple cinch dice bag they are um, double-sided so they can go any way they want they've got a little toggle in there to hold them together they can go all the way flat but they've got bags that they can hold their dice in now. And I'm pretty sure that Randy would be very thrilled that the first project I did to get the studio open and up and running was dice bags for our kid. So it was so good to create yesterday. I can't tell you how lovely it was to create yesterday. And that's part of the reason why you've got me here today creating on video. I wanna show you the water. You see the water? It's a little dark because sometimes, uh, uh, I don't know, there we go. Sometimes you'll still get a little bit of um, dirt and debris to come out of the um, fleece, you know, the roving as you're working it. And sometimes even if the dye has been well um, taken in by the fiber, sometimes you'll get a little bit of dye runoff going on. So don't freak out about that at all. Um, that's just a normal part of the process. You see that I'm back to squeezing our cords again. And I can feel, because they have, have condensed pretty well here, I can feel that they're coming together nicely. They're not done, and that's okay, but I wanted to squeeze them so that I could see how they were felting up and what I needed to do next. Thing about wet felting something like the cords is that you're going to increase the pressure and the friction as more felting occurs, okay? So I'm squeezing pretty hard as they're going through this time, as opposed to how gently I was squeezing at the beginning. It's just part of the process. You just up your game and you go in a little harder for that second one around, you know? Um, and now I'm gonna go back here and we're gonna start rubbing. And you see, I'm being a little more aggressive now I don't have to worry about the fibers falling apart so much. And I can just start giving them what for. And we'll get those cords to come together too sweet. And before you know it, we'll have two of the 12 cords done. And I'll continue on after the video getting the rest of them done for the day. But I wanted to come to you this morning and show you the process as I did up these first couple of cords so that you could see it for yourself and get an idea of what this thing called felting is. Um, if you happen to be in the Topeka area, Sunday, this coming Sunday, the 27th, I will be at the Topeka Shawnee County Public Library from noon to four for their fiber festival. There are a lot of groups and a lot of people who will be there um, and have tables set up to explain and, and tell you about the different fiber work that they do. Um, and there will be pre presentations throughout the day. I will be at a table talking about my felting kits that'll be available starting on the weekend and talking about the felting videos that I'm bringing to you with the felted experience. And then at three o'clock, I will be making a presentation for anyone that wants to come along. And I found some really neat YouTube videos that I think will do an excellent job of helping to explain what felting is, what the history of felting is, how to felt, and give you some, some inspiration for things that can be created with felt. Um, felting is something that's multi-purpose. I mean, you can make garments with felt, you can make sculptures with felt, you can make bags and accessories with felt. Um, you, can, you can make dryer balls with felt. Um, and use them instead of dryer sheets in your um, clothes dryer. They help sort of evenly distribute the moisture as the dryer cycle is going. 
and they also, because they're bouncing around a little bit in the dryer, they work to discharge any static cling, so you don't have to worry about putting any chemicals in your dryer um, to get your clothes soft and static free because the wool dryer balls can do it all. Those are a lot of fun to make and they're fast and easy to make. The first part of them go together. Sorry, I got an itch on my nose. Um, the first part of them, for me, go together with a little bit of needle felting to sort of baste the fibers into the structure that I want. And then you shove that, that loose ball into an old pair of stockings. And you tie a knot in it, and then you shove another one in, and you tie a knot in it, and you shove another one in, and you tie a knot in it, until you've got a long line of balls ready to be felted and then you throw them into a washing machine and then into a dryer and you let them go to town and the washing machine because you'll want to put them in with you know some towels or sheets so that you can use hot water they're going to have that hot soapy water like we had here at the beginning um, and they will have that agitation as they're being you know put through the cycle of the clothes washer and then when you're done with those, you'll throw them in the dryer, still in the pantyhose, okay? Throw them in the dryer, and they're gonna bounce around some more. And as they bounce around some more, they are going to, hi Kim, how are you? They are going to um, get completely fulled. Fulling is the final part of the felting process where the fibers are sort of shocked and locked into place. So when you've got the dryer balls in the pantyhose, in the dryer, they are going to get shocked into place by the dry, and then you will cut them out of the pantyhose, and voila, you've got yourself some dryer balls to take the place of any dryer sheets or fabric softener that you might use. And that's just another, you know, way that you can use felting to create something really cool. And I'm realizing what the background looks like. And you can see my little exercise ball chair and my very messy desk. Um, I apologize for that. That's a little bit of a mess back there, but no worries. By the first, it'll all be looking good. So I don't know if you've been watching, but as I've been scrubbing these felted cords back and forth, I'm noticing that we're coming down to a nice spot. I don't think that they are going to pull apart anymore. We've got a good basic felting on. And what I'm gonna do next, after I get done with this line here, I'm gonna refresh the hot water and then we're gonna start the fulling process. Remember, that's the final process of felting where we're sort of shocking and locking those fibers into place. And we're gonna do that by adding some more hot water it should still be relatively hot. It's definitely a lot warmer than what the water is in the dish pan right now. But we're gonna put that hot water on it and then we're going to start what is really kind of the most fun of felting. Um, a lot of times when you're doing something like cords, I won't show this to you on the screen because this is something I have to do upstairs in the shower. Um, it's called a thwacking process. And if you can imagine, taking a taking a bull whip and going like this against the wall of the shower and just thwack 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 well thwacking is what helps this fulling process and thwacking is so much fun so if you're doing something like a scarf or a bag or something what you'll do is you might thwack it down on the table you might scrub it really vigorously over some industrial strength bubble wrap. Uh, April, do you have a finished product we can see? No, April, I left it upstairs. I'm so bad about that. But I will post a final product after it. Hi, Marshila, how are you? I'll post a picture of the final felted cordings. And if you go through um, my page, um, Anna Walker Designs, you should be able to find um, a picture of um, me wearing several felted bangles. Okay, so now is the fun part. I'm just sort of squeezing and getting that process started, and now I'm gonna add some more hot water. Now remember I told you that um, we use the soapy water 
to open, change the pH and open up the fibers. Well, to get those fibers to close back up after I'm done working the fulling process on this, I am going to let these soak in a vinegar water bath and that will change the pH back and close those fibers up so that the cording will be locked into place. Ooh, watch out, no no squishes on the, see this is why you don't thwack in front of the uh, camera, in front of the computer, in front of the, in front of the phone, taking the video, because splashes go everywhere. But you see, I'm just be I'm being really rough. I mean, I am just going after these cords and that's to get them to do this final little bit of felting so that we can get them into their vinegar water bath, change that pH, and be ready <clears throat> to rinse and drip dry. Let's see. Uh, ah, thank you, Marshila. Uh, this is, yesterday was my first day in the studio. <coughs> I actually sewed, excuse me for that, I actually sewed up some dice bags for my youngest son's game group. And it was so good to be working at my desk again. And I knew that I had this order that I needed to do up for Gail. And so I thought, you know what, let's just video it and let everyone see what this process is like. All right, so now you can see I'm being really aggressive and just running my hands over the cording. And I don't have to worry so much about a knot right now because the cord's felted. This is just part of that fulling process, getting those fibers sort of locked into place. And now we're gonna do this one. Anybody have any questions? We're really close to me sort of finishing up the video for today. But this gave you a nice little preview of what you'll see. I'm gonna do these little um, videos on the general Facebook page on a regular basis. And even though we closed the Felted Experience signups yesterday, we will be coming again open in January. So if you haven't signed up yet for my email list, you're gonna miss out on some posts that will um, give you a little more education and background and give you some places where you can find things as well. Oh, uh, what did you post, E? Is that a picture of the felted cords? E posted a picture from Instagram and I'm guessing, I'm guessing, I could be wrong, um, but I'm wondering if it's the cords. Thank you, E, for posting. Thank you everyone for being here today. So if you know someone who would like to have some fun with this, send them my direction. This is so, there's something very relaxing about creating with your hands. Oh, it's mine from August. Okay, thanks E, I appreciate that. Marshila and April and anyone else who is wanting to know, E posted one of my photos from August of the felted cords. And there be cords here. We've got cords. And I'm so glad that y'all came and joined me for this. Oops, I better get water off my computer before it screws up my computer. There we go, we're all good, we're all good. It's okay, it's good, we got it. So that's felted cords. Um, let me turn this up a little bit so you can see my unmade up face. Hi, how are you? Um, and I've got a little sploosh on my, on my glasses here. So that's, um, in a nutshell, how to do a simple felted cord. Um, I'm going to bring some simple projects to you on a regular basis on here. Um, I hope to have them planned out a little bit more so that you'll know when I'm going to be online with a particular project. Um, but you know, just check back on a regular basis. And if you haven't signed up for my email list yet, 
please do. Um, in January, we'll be opening up the Felt It experience again, and we will have um, a track record of a couple of months going with the experience, and it'll be even better by the time January rolls around than what it's going to be now. So thanks for being here. I appreciate all of you coming in and talking and chatting, and E, thanks for sharing the photos, and I will talk to you all soon. Have fun. Bye.